When we think of Alzheimer's disease, we think about an older person experiencing a progressive loss of memory and difficulty recognizing common objects or even faces of loved ones. For many years, Alzheimer's was thought to be a consequence of aging with a genetic propensity toward getting it. In other words, there was nothing you could do to avoid it. But new understandings about how the foods we eat impact the brain have many linking the disease to our diet and calling Alzheimer's disease type 3 diabetes. In this video, I'll discuss how Alzheimer's is linked to a pre-diabetic state called insulin resistance and why that might be good news in the long run. Insulin resistance in the body is a common condition that develops as a direct result of eating the standard American diet, which is a diet high in refined carbs and sugar. Insulin's job is to move nutrients into your cells, so every time you eat these types of foods, insulin is pulsed out of the pancreas so that those sugars, which we call glucose, don't build up in your blood. When we eat a high carb diet, we tend to be hungry more often and that frequent eating causes insulin to spike multiple times a day. And after a while, your cells get tired of insulin's constant deliveries and they resist insulin's attempts to drop off that glucose. And this is the state in the body referred to as insulin resistance. And left untreated, it leads to type 2 diabetes. But now we are seeing that the brain can also become insulin resistant. And this is why we are starting to hear Alzheimer's disease referred to as type 3 diabetes. Now this idea of Alzheimer's being related to insulin resistance was first proposed about 30 years ago by Dr. Suzanne de Lamonte after she noticed that blocking insulin production in rats caused their brains to develop the same plaques and tangled nerve fibers that show up in Alzheimer's patients. Since that first discovery, there has been research that shows that having diabetes increases your risk of cognitive decline. But if there is a silver lining to all of this, it would be that if a poor diet contributes to Alzheimer's, then a good diet should protect against the disease. And there is some research that supports this idea. Here we see that when a ketogenic diet, which is a very low carb, high fat diet was fed to mice, it resulted in a reduction of the hallmark plaque deposits that are associated with Alzheimer's. And these results happened despite the fact that the mice were fed saturated fats, which is a topic I've discussed in other videos. So there are a few things you can do to protect your brain and support memory and cognitive skills. First and foremost is to get the sugar out of your diet and make better choices overall when it comes to eating carbohydrates. A low carbohydrate diet doesn't mean no carbohydrates. Carbs are found in plant foods, so a good rule of thumb is if the food still looks like a plant, it is going to be a better choice than if it no longer looks anything like a plant. For instance, leafy greens are a much better choice for controlling blood sugar and insulin than a donut or even a slice of bread. If you need a place to start, watch my free video series and learn my 0123 strategy. It is a great way to get the sugar out of your diet and replace that with healthy, high quality carbs like non-starchy vegetables. Also, don't be afraid to replace carbs with fat. Fats do not impact your blood sugar or insulin and they keep you feeling satisfied. You can eat a variety of fats, and I will say that omega-3 fats are particularly good choices for brain health. So make sure that you are including foods like wild-caught fish, eggs, nuts, and seeds in your daily diet. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will be back soon with another video to help you reach your goal. Thanks.